Okay, let's see something that you have not seen before. Mad Scientist here. Now, Walter Russell and others um, in a distant past have said that uh, magnets have vortexes on either pole. Now, I explain polarity and I explain this vortex in the upcoming fourth edition. But what about demonstrable proof? Well, you can actually see it underneath the ferro cell. You can see the hypertrochoidal pattern. And I'm the first person to uncover what magnetism is, and it's a reciprocating processional hyperboloid that can only extract itself out, extrapolate itself out, as a, uh, as a pressure mediation, um, as a hypertrochoidal pattern underneath the ferro cell. But what actually about demonstrable vortex actually exists? And the answer is that it can't even exist any other way. Now, geomagnetic precession or the more frequency is a known entity of magnetism. So what defines a magnet? Before it's magnetized, it's an inanimate lump of neodymium iron boron or samarium cobalt or a ferrite. So what actually defines a magnet once it has become a quote-unquote magnet? And the explanation for that is incredibly simple. It is field coherency. It's the same differentiation that separates out a light from a laser, field coherency. So what you have on a macro scale is uh, present on the micro scale. You actually have that geomagnetic precession um, that extrapolates itself out uh, as a hypertrochoidal pattern. So right now let's take a look and uh, let's uh, cut to the chase. Right now I have a simple video camera, an old cathode ray tube, 27 inch. Let me pan over here. You can see on the wall I have a, a counterclockwise um, spiral right here as you can see it's pointed at this one right now on the TV and a clockwise spiral and then I have a grid over there so the camcorder is just pointing at that okay so now I'm going to use a 2x2x1 two by two by inch neodymium iron boron magnet to show you the actual vortex on either pole of the magnet simplicity is divinity and then I will show you that necessitatively as per my explanation the central vortex which is the centripetal point of convergence must be inverse to the outer edge and that is also demonstrable using what no one's been able to prove 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 that a vortex exactly exists on either pole of a magnet but um, I always knew it was there. My formula for what a vortex is, for what magnetism is, for what the reciprocating processional hyperboloid is. So let's take a look, shall we? So right now we have a counterclockwise spiral on the CRT tube, correct? Well, okay. Now we're going to take one pole of a magnet. I have the south pole marked green, the north pole marked red. So as I approach, take a look at this counterclockwise vortex here, okay? Notice which way it turns. It's moving it's turning the same direction as the spiral is. So you can actually see the vortex turning counterclockwise. Right? That means that the centripetal vortex must necessitatively be inverse if my explanation of magnetism is correct. And if you look really closely, you'll see that the scintillating lines are clockwise. They're moving clockwise. You see this? is moving counterclockwise. Now this is the south, pole, the south pole of the magnet right now that I'm actually pointing towards the CRT tube. Counterclockwise movement, but the centripetal is moving clockwise. You can actually see the scintillating hairs there, if you look closely, moving clockwise. Now it should be inverse if I flip it over. Since this is moving counterclockwise, and the north pole should be moving this, the field, the actual projection from the back of the CRT tube, the electrostatic discharge, which is actually hitting the phosphorus of the screen, it should be moving that discharge, that uh, dielectric uh, longitudinal discharge, in a clockwise fashion, counter to the counterclockwise spiral here, correct? And also the centripetal point should be moving counterclockwise. So let's see if that's true. Well, it is true. You see it's moving it clockwise. Look at the spiral here. It's moving it clockwise. Whoops. Let me reset that. Hold on a second. That happens about every uh, 10 minutes or so. On my camcorder, and there we go. There we go. There's a timeout feature on the camcorder. You see? It's moving clockwise. Now let me move this more. There we go. Perfectly center on the CRT tube. Okay? Moving clockwise. You see the difference between this? Now look at this image. You see how the lines are being sucked in like this? Apparently so. And if I flip it around, it'll be totally different. Got this versus this. 
Now if we look closely here, the centripetal uh, center of convergence, if I get it off to the side where you can see it here, is moving counterclockwise, while the centrifugal is moving counterclockwise, moving clockwise, contrary to the counterclockwise circle. Now, if I move over to the other spiral, it'll be just the opposite. Remember, all I'm doing is pointing a camcorder on this crummy little tripod, which I've got tons of good tripods, but now this spiral is moving clockwise, and this one was moving counterclockwise, so let me use the last field that I used, which is the North Pole, and you will see it moving in the same direction. North Pole, clockwise, moving in the same direction. Now if I move it to the South Pole on the centrifugal, it will be inverse to the uh, counterclockwise of the first one. Exactly correct. Look, South Pole, inverse to the first diagram. And, regardless of that, the centripetal convergent will show that the centripetal um, effect right here at the center of this bright spot right here in the center will be moving clockwise. Now check out video number two and I'm going to show you more stuff but let's move back again and see if you understand what's going on here. I have a ferrofluid suspension that I actually created that shows I can actually create a tornado in a bottle basically using my own special design of ferrofluid. I have a counterclockwise spiral here. Notice it's moving counterclockwise. If I flip it over, we'll get a totally different pattern. You see that pattern versus this pattern. Totally different, right? Let me show you something else in the next video. But here, if you look only at the centripetal point, which I hope you can see, you can see the centripetal point is moving on the south pole, is moving clockwise, but will move inverse vortex on the North Pole is the scintillating hairs, they're moving counterclockwise. Counterclockwise? Clockwise. This is the only way Mother Nature knows how to exist. The field pressure extrapolation can only exist as a reciprocating processional hyperboloid with inverse vortexes along each pole, uh, centrifugal, centripetal, clockwise, counterclockwise, and inversely so on the other pole. Uh, centrifugal, counterclockwise, or clockwise, and then inverse to that on the centripetal. It can only exist this way. So check out video number two, and then we'll take a look at something really neat, okay? Bye.